If you're suddenly struggling with acne, dry skin, and a whole host of poor skin health, then maybe it's time that you take a closer look at what you're eating, as we all know that you are what you eat. So to further discuss with us the concept of the gut-skin connection is Nikki Robertson, who's an NLP practitioner and a nutritionist. Good to have you back, Nikki. Thanks, Mike. Nikki, tell us about the, some of the lifestyle factors and influencing factors that can have an impact on our skin. There's so much. So hormones as we know as we reach puberty it can affect our skin mm -hmm. when you reach menopause it can affect your skin so there's so many hormonal influences there's also environmental influences so very dry weather very cold weather um, can factor in things from eczema to to psoriasis to dermatitis there's so many external things that are going on as well right. that will determine the health of your skin okay. but possibly the biggest one is your gut and I mean, most people watching the show regularly will have a good understanding of how important gut health is yeah, by now. Yeah. Uh, but we don't always tie back the health of our gut to the health of our skin. Okay. And in functional medicine, we use the skin as a diagnostic tool more than anything else right, to right. diagnose or try and get a window in on what's going on in a person's body, specifically their gut. Okay. So what we look for um, are things like dark circles under the eyes. We look for um, red patches on the skin. We look for acne. We look for acne breaking out in specific places, which okay. will tell us, is it skin or is it, ho uh, is it gut or is it hormones? So the skin is really a map of what's going on on the inside and it makes sense because on the inside we just the skin on the outside turned inside out that's it i was going to say i mean where does the gut start and the skin end you it know? doesn't so yeah. it's all it's all in infinity mm. and our skin on the outside just has scalier layers okay. to protect us from the extremities but the skin on the inside is very vulnerable and just because we don't see it doesn't mean there's no inflammation there yes. we can feel it when it gets really bad um, and when we've been abusing the body we can really feel you know the tummy ache yes. All those sorts of things. Discomforts. The discomforts. But, you know, most people, when they have a tummy ache, they'll go to their GP or a gastroenterologist. And when they've got a skin condition, they'll go to their dermatologist. Mm. And nowadays, even these really specialized practices or specialized people are starting to connect the two together, which okay. is really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Nikki, let's talk about how inflammation and hormonal imbalances can have an impact on the skin. Okay. So... Inflammation is, when we talk about inflammation from a functional medicine or nutrition point of view, it is something that's causing um, the whole body, every part of the body to um, be out of its comfort zone, okay. for want of a better word. So inflammation is, is swelling, it's, it's red, it is uncomfortable, it is painful. Mm -hmm. So if you had to burn yourself, that's inflammation. Yes. Uh, so I'm not talking about that kind of extreme inflammation, but what inflammation or systemic, low-grade, pervasive or chronic inflammation yes. does is it gets the immune system to work overboard. So okay. the immune system is always working. It's always being distracted by inflammation to go and deal with the inflammation instead of being on the lookout on the radar for viruses and bacteria and other pathogens. So it also creates what we call immune confusion. So for example, if you are over time becoming chronically inflamed mm -hmm. and you are also stressed, your body is starting is going to start blurring the lines between the boss who's yelling at you and the inflammation on the inside of your body and start creating things like histamines. Okay. And you will suddenly associate that runny nose with the trees outside. Meanwhile, those histamines are coming about because of some kind of inflammation in the okay. body. And very much hormones, um, you know, hormones are, a lot of our hormones are even made in the gut. So that's the other thing that we've discovered over, as I'd said, the last 10 to 20 years that hormones aren't just made in hormone organs. Right, There's right. so many connections to the other organs. Uh, the brain-gut connection is another example. We make neurons in the gut. Um, so, you know, everything is interconnected. And I think that is probably the best thing or best way of thinking about this. So when there's an imbalance in the gut, it's going to affect all of the systems, including the hormone system. Okay. And the reason for that, for a good example, is when you eat a lot of sugar, um, you're going to create a proliferation of, of candida in the gut, which is going to probably eat up all sorts of other healthy, good commensurate bacteria. But also what it's going to do is it's going to suppress testosterone okay. in men. It may increase androgens or male hormones in women which result in breakouts right yes, and this right. is all because you eat processed food mm. okay mm. so it's and it doesn't happen immediately and that's I think the thing you know when you go and eat a muscle that is off 
you got to get sick yes, and you'll know it's yeah, the seafood. Yeah. But when it comes to sy systemic problems with regards to processed food, lots of processed food over time, it can take years mm -hmm. to get to a point where you are really just feeling bad okay. and you don't even know where to start unpacking that. And then it's also going to be a long process of recovery if you have to go yes, the other way. It does. And what we tend to do is take, you know, something for the eczema. Mm. So we slap on a cream and a cortisone usually and don't think that, you know, when did this eczema start happening? What was going on in my life? Mm. What are my eating habits? How stressed was I? What soaps was I using? Mm. We don't because it takes so long for these things to manifest, we can't really unpack them backwards. If we can, that's useful. Yes. So we slap on a cortisone. We don't think of removing the thing that triggered it in the first place, which is so often what we're swallowing. Yeah, and yeah. the proverbial band-aid to just put the cream on to solve the problem outwardly. Sure, and if there's a place for that. You mm -hmm. want to get rid of the itch, but you can't depend on that. Yes. And no doctor who's worth going to is going to give you cortisone forever because mm. it's counterintuitive. You've Absolutely. got to fix the source of the problem. Yeah. So Nikki, we talk about the gut biome and the skin biome as mm. two sort of separate things, but at the same time, very interrelated. So how does that connectivity work and how do you maintain a good biome both inside and outside? All right. So yes, the, the first line that most people approach or most the way that most people tackle the biome uh, and the biome is a collection of bacteria, healthy bacteria, not so healthy bacteria, a balance like a garden. Yes, yes. So if you think of everything from the stomach through the small intestine through to the colon as a garden that has specific needs, it has to have different bacteria to grow organisms that are good for us. Yes. The same happens on the skin. So no matter how we wash our skin, you still got bacteria there and you need the bacteria there. It is there to protect you. And there are similar bacteria on the skin as there are in the gut. Now, if you are destroying the bacteria in your gut through antibiotics mm -hmm. or whatever, um, and you're destroying the bacteria on your skin through harsh abrasive chemicals, you're going to start getting an imbalance on mm -hmm. both ends of the spectrum. And what you're doing to the outside is absorbed through the body and becomes on the inside. And what you're doing on the inside goes out to the outside yes. so they work hand in glove and you know it's not as simple as taking a probiotic mm. i think probiotics are really useful if you've been on a course of antibiotics or you've done something where you've had to um, for whatever reason diminish gut bacteria and the reason i'm saying that is because we don't know what's diminished yes. so you go along and you get a general probiotic and you might be putting back stuff you've already got mm. you might be causing an overgrowth you don't know but the best way to tackle that is to give your your gut the raw material to create its own garden okay and in doing that we we have to eat a range of foods it goes yes. back to a broad spectrum of, of different kind of foods the most diverse diet you can have is going to help your gut and your skin grow a diverse range of bacteria that it needs at a certain time okay so in winter your skin and your gut will have maybe higher levels of certain bacteria to protect you from the elements yes and at other times it will have different levels of different kinds of strains of bacteria and how is the way we choose our food or the way uh, maybe the question is the food has become available all year around so That's how does that now yeah. constant um, access to all foods uh, stop this sort of natural balance because uh, as you say if winter's certain things are right for winter yes. others are right for summer we're missing that because now because broccoli is available all year round we'll mm. just eat broccoli because that's our favorite vegetable yes. it is, you know. yeah I don't think it influences our bacteria too much but it influences so much else in our lives because we're not getting like you say you're not getting a range of mm. different nutrients and also when you shop seasonally and you shop what's available you're reducing your carbon footprint for one and you are more likely to experiment with things that you might never else have had yes never otherwise have had so if we didn't have access to broccoli in summer we would have tried something else mm, and mm. that would be really good for the for these these gardens in the bodies to be able to use those prebiotics those raw materials as prebiotics to start growing healthy bacteria okay. so yes it is it, it, you know, everything comes back to trying to be in sync with nature um, we're all obsessed with sanitizers so mm. washing our hands at the moment that's really bad for the skin microbiome you touch your hands with sanitizers you're going to end up with dry patches yeah and the response to that is the, bo the body's going to overcompensate by making too much oil and then you're going to slap on something for the oil yeah. and you just got to the cycle the best suddenly, yeah and go back to simplicity i okay. think simplicity you know when you when you're taking too many things when you're trying too many things when you're questioning yourself too much seeing too many therapists or mm. doctors you've got to stop 
and go back to the absolute most simple, simple of practices. And then you can start putting one thing back at a time and seeing what works for you and what doesn't. Okay, mm. Nikki, thank you so much for sharing some insight around this topic. Great to chat to you. Thanks.